Okay, the other uh, component that we need to talk about is mole fraction. So anytime you take a fraction, it's, uh, so for example, like your grade, it's your points divided by the total. Well, this is very similar. It's the ratio of the number of moles of a given component in a mixture divided by the total number, number of moles in the mixture. So it's the mole fraction. And the symbol is the chi. Uh, it has no units, and it's like a fancy X. Okay, so we can calculate mole fraction for each gas. So chi sub 1 is equal to N1 over N total. And from what we talked about before with Dalton's um, partial pressure, the number of moles is directly related to pressure. And so we can substitute N1 in, and we can substitute this in for any mole. And so we can also get that the mole fraction is equal to P1 over P total, or the partial pressure of that gas divided by the total pressure. And so we can basically set up a little relationship here where um, mole fraction is equal to number of moles of that gas over the total, and that's also equal to the partial pressure of that gas over the total. So you don't need to necessarily have moles every time. You can also use pressure to find your mole fraction. So let's look at an example of that. So partial pressure of oxygen gas was observed to be 156 torr. So partial pressure of O2 is 156 torr in air with a total atmospheric pressure, so total pressure, is 743 torr. Calculate the mole fraction of O2 present. Okay, well in this case we only know pressure information. We don't know anything about number of moles. Well, I know that moles and pressure are related, so the mole fraction of O2 is equal to the partial pressure of O2 over the total pressure. And so since I have those things, I can just plug them in. Now, as long as my units are the same for both pressures, because it's a ratio, I can use TOR. But if one of my pressures when it was in atmospheres, I would have to make sure I had the same units for both. Okay, and I've already calculated this for you. You get 0 0.210. And remember, mole fraction doesn't have any units, so that's it. We could also take this and rearrange this to solve for total pressure. We could solve for mole fraction, or we could solve for the partial pressure. So you could solve for any of these three variables given if you knew the other two, not just solving for mole fraction. Okay, so let's also talk about the vapor pressure of water. When we collect a gas through the displacement of water, we're going to get a mixture of gases, one of those being water vapor. So, for example, if we collect oxygen gas by decomposing solid potassium chlorate, then the gas that we collect is going to be a mixture of oxygen and water vapor because we're displacing the water to collect the oxygen. When the rate of the water vapor escape equals the rate of return, um, then the number of water vapor, water vapor molecules is going to be constant, and that gives us the vapor pressure of water. So it's kind of like partial pressure of water. Oh, whoops, let's go back. So basically, here's kind of what's going on. So we've got um, our HCl liquid and some solid magnesium, so we're decomposing it. So we're giving off this gas, and it's going up through this tube and into here, and then it's bubbling in through the water. And so we can collect the gas here, and it's going to be a mixture of hydrogen gas and then the water vapor because we're bubbling it through water. Okay, let's look at an example. Okay, so we have our reaction of potassium chlorate and we're breaking it down into potassium chloride and oxygen. So oxygen produced was collected by displacement of water at 22 Celsius at a total pressure of 754 torr. So volume of gas collected was 0.65 liters in the vapor pressure of water at 22 Celsius is 21 torr. So we want to calculate the partial pressure of O2 in the gas collected and the mass of KClO3 in the sample that was decomposed. Okay, so let's go to a new slide. Let's um, write all of our information. Let's get a pen. Okay, so first we want to write down our equation. Let's put it up here so we have some room. 2KCl3 is going to go to 2KCl plus 3O2. Okay, now let's write down some of our information. Um, so we'll just put it down here below our equation. We know we're looking for the amount of KCl3 that was displaced. We know that it's at 22 Celsius. Um, which is 295K. So we'll just, we know we need Kelvin, we'll do it right now. And we know that the total pressure is 754 torr. Okay, we also know for the oxygen that we displaced 0.650 liters of oxygen gas. 
we know it's also at 295 K and we also know the partial pressure of the water through which the gas was passed through is 21 torr and we want to find the partial pressure of O2. Okay, well we know that total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of all the gases. Well even though we have a lot of other things in this equation, not all of them are gases. In fact, uh, KCl3 is a solid KCl is a solid, and O2 is a gas. So we've got basically our total pressure is equal to the vapor pressure of water plus the partial pressure of the O2. So if we rearrange this to solve for the partial pressure of O2, since that's the one that we are trying to find, we know total pressure is 754 torr. We know partial pressure or vapor pressure of water was 21 torr. And so if we subtract, that gives us 733 torr. Okay, so that takes care of our partial pressure. Now we're looking for the grams of KClO3. Well, in order to get grams, we're going to need moles. But we don't really know anything else about KClO3, but we do know the partial pressure of O2, and it's a gas, so we can assume it behaves as an ideal gas. So we know the pressure, we know the volume, we know the temperature, we can use ideal gas law to find moles of O2, and then use mole ratio to convert to KClO3. Well, in order to use the ideal gas law, I know my pressure is going to need to be in atmosphere. So let's convert that real quick. I know for every 760 torr, there's one atmosphere. And so that should give us 0.964 atmospheres. So we're going to use PV equals NRT. We're solving for the number of moles of O2. And so that's going to equal pressure of O2 times volume over RT. So now if we plug in... Our partial pressure of O2 is 0.964 atmospheres. We converted the torr to atmospheres. Our volume was 0 0.650 liters. Okay, R is going to stay the same, 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And our temperature was 295K. So I've calculated all this for you. We get 0 0.02588 moles. So now that's our moles of O2. So now let's convert to KClO3. Well, first of all, I know that for every three moles of O2, there are two moles of KClO3. And then if I want to get to grams, I need molar mass. I know for every one mole of KClO3, there are 122.55 grams. So that's just taking all your atomic masses and adding them together. If you calculate this out, you get 2.11 grams of KClO3. And that's your answer.